Uh, I started playing Astro's Playroom, which is the game that comes preloaded onto your PlayStation 5. So anybody that buys a PlayStation 5 is going to have Astro's Playroom preloaded. If you remember back to the PS4, there is um, uh, there was a game called Astro's uh, Astrobot Playroom or something like that. And it was a very basic tech demo that was just showing you how, here's how this game or how this controller works. Well, Astro's Playroom is kind of the same way where it's designed really to show you the full capability of your DualSense controller on the PS5, but it's also an, a, a game and it's a really good game. Like I sat through and played it yesterday. It took me about three hours to complete everything, two and a half, mm. three hours. Mm. And it's it's a full, realized, well done fantastic platformer like really really good and so much so that i kind of wish there was more content to it to continue through because the level designs and the whole experience from top to bottom was really really awesome and the fact that this is free and preloaded on your system is just so cool and i highly recommend playing so this is the this is the developers that did uh, astrobot rescue mission which is that vr title that like people fell in love with on psvr I think last year, two years ago, maybe. Yeah. So same people. And Astrobot, this bot character, is kind of becoming like the the um, the the mascot for PlayStation a little bit because they started with Astrobot Playroom or whatever back in the PS4, and then they had Astrobot Rescue Mission, which is made by a company inside Sony Interactive Entertainment, and then now we have Astro's Playroom. So this little character, who's a cute little robot character is now becoming kind of like a de facto standard. And I think everybody and their dog that's played this game wants them to make this and expand it into a bigger and better experience because it's got so much potential and so much... This is like the Crash Bandicoot or the Mario kind of... Like, he's got that ability to be that character for people. Yeah. It's so charming. Very cool. Yeah. Well, it's good. We need something like that. I agree. Wasn't on my radar. Yeah. Did you know it it was on your console? No, really, I don't care. I didn't care about that. I know you've talked about it, but I was just like, whatever. You know, I want to play Spider Man. Yeah, Demon Souls. Fair. Well, I, I would recommend. I would really recommend diving into this because one of the things that it, it does a really good job of. Well, it does it does three things really well. One, it's a great game. Like just by by and large, it's a fantastic platformer. Very well nice. designed platformer. Yeah. Uh, two. It showcases the power of the DualSense controller. Like it shows you every possible thing you could do with this controller very quickly and easily in a way you can understand it, which I like a lot, which I'll go into that a little bit in a little here shortly. The third thing it does really well is it's like a love letter to PlayStation history. Like what they've done in this game is you're you enter into this uh, area called PlayStation Labo, which I find is funny. And I I wonder if there's any like Nintendo copyrights because there's Nintendo Labo, the the cardboard thing. Uh-oh. And then here you have PlayStation Labo. But it's a lab it's a laboratory where there's a bunch of little astrobots running around that are like doing testing of games and stuff like that. So you'll see like a video cam- an astrobot with a camera that's like taking a video of a, a little mini Spyro character on the table. And then somebody else is like play testing an old game from like PS1 era. And there's all these little bots running around just like doing little things. And then the objective is there's four pathways you can go to in the main atrium area, which is called the CPU Plaza. And the CPU Plaza is how you access, and it's designed to be like the internals of a of a game system in a sense. So you yeah. start in the CPU yeah. Plaza, <clears throat> and you branch out four different pathways. There is um, an area that's your solid state drive, and there's like fancy names for it. Like one's like I have to look up the names. I'll, I'll pull those up in a second. But there's one that's for the solid state drive. There's one that's like the GPU Coastway or some something like that. There's one that's uh. Um, about your memory, so your memory stick or whatever, and there's one for uh, cooling, so like your your cooling system, and they so they have these big giant ass like 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 a fan that's like a spinning fan that's got like cool blue lights coming out of it. And you walk up to it and it opens up a portal. They enter into the portal and that takes you into that 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 level, and the level is broken up into four parts, and each part has a different kind of component to it. There's always going to be either a platforming level. Or there's going to be one that has a um, unique um, 
kind of special ability that really t- dials down into the a specific trait of the dual sense controller. So for example, in the GPU area, it was all jungle based. So when you're playing through the GPU land, it's like you're in this big massive jungle. But it was cool because like the leaves, like the, the grass petals that were flowing looked like they were like uh, CPU like ribbons of cables you would plug into c- computer parts. But they were green, but they had little like nodes on them that made it look like it was an electronic thing. Um but you're traveling through this whole area, doing all this cool platforming, jumping around, fighting bad guys. You have a square that's just your regular attack. Uh, you press jump to jump up in the air, and you press jump, you press X, and you press X again and hold it to have like a boost. It's like a rock, like a, a short-lived uh, jetpack boost. And then whenever you are, there's areas where you can jump into like say there's a part in the very early part of the game where you jump into these catapults. And you have your controller in your hand and you have to swipe down on your controller to pull back and launch yourself up in the air. And then when you launch yourself up in the air, you start flying and you use the gyroscope in your controller to move yourself around. And then there's uh, one part back in the GPU area, the jungle part, where you become you enter into a, a gorilla suit, a robotic gorilla suit. And you use your your dynamic your adapt your haptic triggers to one after the other like hold down R two to reach up and climb. So you're holding down R two to like extend your arm, and then you're moving the gyroscope controller that direction you want your arm to move up and grab a handhold. And then you flip the controller the other direction and reach up and grab the other handhold using L two. And as you're doing that, because you're reaching up, you're feeling tension as you're pushing down the controller buttons to reach up and grab things and then there's a part where you get to like this rope and you're holding on to the rope and you hold l2 and r2 together and you have to rotate your gyroscope controller in a full circle to spin your character around to wind him up to then leap, leap up and grab the next like pull that's up above him and that's just like one of the ways that they um utilize the haptic controller feedback, the tension, all that stuff to showcase what this controller can do. Um, there was one mission where you're inside of a little um, space out, space uh, spaceship and it's got two thrusters. So you have a left and a right thruster, again using L2 and R2. And you have to use the thrusters and alternate them to control the direction of your spaceship and also use the gyroscopes to kind of navigate yourself through these electrical field so there's these things that could like catch you like electrocute you if you hit the uh hit the the field or whatever so you have to kind of slowly navigate and kind of use the pressure sensitive buttons to kind of trigger yourself through but there's there's all this really cool feedback happening throughout it sometimes it's a little excessive but in most cases it's just there's just so much happy on the controller as you're playing this game that you're like, holy shit, I can't believe this is the like there's all these subtle nuanced details with like the vibrations and the movement and the fact you're using gyroscopes and then you're using the swipe pad and you're also using the button triggers and different tensions and stuff like that. Like you're using your controller to its fullest capability throughout the entire experience. And it's really, cool. really cool. Yeah, I just <clears throat> I mean, I think that's great, but at the same time, I feel like it's going to have the switch problem. Like the switch came out one, two switch or whatever. And they're like, yeah, you use it and do all this cool stuff with it. And you know, these really awesome controllers and they cost a lot if you need to replace them or you want to buy different colors. And it's just like how many games actually take advantage of those features? Like not, not even, I mean, it's very small fraction. I feel like it's cool that we have a game that actually deals with that, but um, I doubt that they're going to implement that anyway. To most of the games, which is sad. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, it very well could go that direction where it's just not fully realized. I mean, I mean, think back to the Dual Sense Four, where or Dual 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 Shock Four, where they, um, you know, introduce a touchpad, and it's like, oh, this ha- has some potential. Or just even the fact, like, Infamous Second Son was a launch game, and like it had a feature where you could hold and shake your controller you know, to spray paint on the wall and stuff like that. And that was really cool. But like nobody ever really put that to the test later on. I mean, yeah. all the PlayStation games try to introduce some of those features in there. 
but um, it wasn't really realized beyond that um, yeah. in that sense. And it's it's interesting jumping into like, like I played Ghost Recon Breakpoint this weekend with, with some people and um, it's weird because up to that point, I hadn't played a game that wasn't a PlayStation game on with a DualSense controller. So I thought the triggers were like the tension. I just assumed that that was how the normal tension was in the controller. But when you go into Ghost Recon Breakpoint, none of that exists. So it's just like you just push it down and it's just normal. Mm. And I was like, this is so different now. It feels so weird. I did feel that tension finally. Yeah. You're talking about. Yeah. So it's you don't realize it's there until you play something that doesn't have it. And then you're like, oh, yeah. okay, now it makes sense. Yeah. Well, honestly, I probably never would have recognized it. You never, if <laughs> you didn't remind me about it. Yeah, because you're like it's here and there, and I was like, well, I don't feel anything. I'm just squeezing this trigger and doing my thing. I'm so sucked in the game, I don't even notice it. Yeah. The uh, the other thing that was cool about this is the uh, the love letter to PlayStation, because like one of the things you're doing as you're you're navigating through all these different, I mean, beautiful levels. Like they're they're just very pretty. Tons of visual effects and things happening in the world and just like a lot of different types of character enemies you get to fight and stuff like that. It was, it was a really cool just overall experience. I mean, the game is great. I mean, like really, really good. I can't talk enough great things about like I feel like everybody should just play this because it's just, it's fun. It's really, really fun. And uh, they have this deal where they're kind of giving you a history lesson into PlayStation a little bit. So you uncover these artifacts as you, like if you find like a, off the beaten path kind of pathway, it's hard to navigate through that path. But if you go that direction, you'll find like a puzzle piece or a um, artifact. And the artifact is like an old piece of hardware from PlayStation's history. So each of the four quadrants represents a different generation of PlayStation. So one's for PlayStation 1, another one's for PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, and PlayStation 4. So when you're going through the PlayStation 2 level, like you're finding the PlayStation 2 console as an artifact. You're finding the there was a, a V-shaped uh, memory card expansion adapter or a uh, controller adapter that you plugged into your PlayStation allows you to output four controllers instead of two by using this V-shaped thing. So you collect that artifact. And then once you collect these these things, so like there was one where you got the PSVR move controller that they have for the gun. So the PSVR gun controller and the uh, the network adapter from the PlayStation 2. Like you collect these little peripherals and they end up coming back t- with you to the PlayStation Labo to make it look like a museum of old PlayStation hardware. And all the little Astrobots are running around like working on it and setting up the stage and they're like have ladders that are climbing up to the top of these real 3D objects, the controllers, the consoles, the hardware peripherals, all that stuff that you're collecting to fill out this room as like, this is a badass like representation of like the history of it. And then along the walls, they have puzzle pieces that are empty. And as you're playing the game, you're collecting puzzle pieces that if you collect all the puzzle pieces is a really nice looking mural to showcase the timeline of everything that's happened in PlayStation in like a mural form. So it's like an art piece cool. up on the wall of cool. things that you're collecting. So it gives you reason to go through and you're collecting coins the whole time throughout the game. And those coins are um, used to purchase at the end of the game. There's a slot machine thing that you can like pull a lever and then grab an item and then squeeze it. And when you pull down the haptic trigger, like you feel the tension of you squeezing into this thing to pop it open. And it can reveal like a puzzle piece you didn't collect or an artifact you didn't collect that can be added to your collection based on how many coins you collected throughout the course of the game. And it was, it was really awesome. But then when I thought it was all said and done, there was one more level that they had and I'm not going to spoil anything, but it was such a badass level. It was this big ass boss battle that they had in there that I did not expect to come. And then after the boss battle was done, there was another boss battle. And then after that was done, there was even one more thing that gave you another like r- big old reveal. And I'm like, I thought I was done with this thing. And it just kept on going with more cool stuff. And nice. it, it was so good. Like nice. I can't say enough good things about this. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, damn it, I have to play it. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing on the list, man. Yeah, like I said, it's, it's, I think I clocked in two and a half hours, so it's not, it's oh, not okay. super long. So it's not, okay, good. Yeah, 
it's very quick but very yeah, yeah, it's like lunch. the feeling that i have when i play dreams like i feel like this is on the same level of the dreams mm. story that i played which that yeah. was so well done and just tight and like beautifully designed this is very similar and cool. again it shows all the cool things oh you can like blow in your controller and have things happen like you can blow in your controller and it like spins a little pinwheel which is kind of cool so nice very nice all right i'm gonna stop talking because that's my review of Thank- astro's playroom everybody should go Thank play you. it